Thank you everybody for coming to our first lecture in our fifth year of free non-credit lectures that Hempology 101 has put on at the University of Victoria. Yay! Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Um, this is going to be a very special year for us. I, I can feel it already. We've had Hempology on campus now for this is our 16th year we've been active here doing different things. And uh, there's a lot of activities here and, and elsewhere that Hempology is, is doing. In fact, I'm bragging we have 21 lectures, rallies, and meetings in the month of September alone. So if you, uh, if you want to be active and learn and participate, Hempology, I think, offers more than most other groups in the world. And we're in a very special place and very special people come to visit us. And we're very honored today to have uh, an author who's been studying this plant longer than I've been alive. Uh, Lawrence Cherniak started in the in 1960s uh, investigating this plant and has studied it, uh, and in particular, hashish making around the planet. And he has three books out. He has a new edition that he's about to show you today. And uh, he's got a ton of web pages, lawrencecherniak.com, references most of them, I, I, I'm sure. But uh, we are very uh, honored and, and lucky to have Lawrence here with us for a couple of days. And uh, hopefully uh, in, in the future with Hempology events uh, here and elsewhere. And uh, so yeah, we have 11 lectures this semester, 11 more next semester. I hope to have the best lineup of speakers yet. And Without a doubt, Lawrence is already pretty much guaranteed that. So thank you very much for coming over. Thank you, Tim. All the hard work you've done. Right on, Yay. Well, once again, thank you, everybody who's here. Um, I'm talking to you about um, the entire universe of uh, the cannabis plant, the hemp plant because it's easier to all, for all of us to relate to the entire picture, even though this basically was initially meant to be a lecture on making hash and ancient times and making hash today. Uh, to effect something like that in half an hour, everybody's agreed would be um, almost impossible if it was anyone but me. <laughs> Thanks to having had people say things like that to me in the past, that if I don't do something, it'll never get done. I'm here to share how special that can really be for every one of us as individuals, if we're really in touch with ourselves on the level of knowing how unique you really are and different from anyone else, and that you have these things within your own mind that can lead to you achieving your goals. Uh, goals and dreams are usually synonymous, but you'll be taken more seriously by those people who would figure you're, you know, some kind of weirdo if you say dreams. So if you talk about your goals, which are really synonymous with your dreams, and if you really pursue those and are persistent, then it doesn't matter what kind of background you have, and because the, the sense of accomplishment when you do achieve your goals, is worth more than uh, everything in the world that you can muster to make a part of your personality. So when the time comes for you to share real love, you'll have something that you can contribute to any relationship that has anything to do with love, which is what it's all about ultimately. Because no matter what the converse, where the conversation is, or goes at any time with whoever you're talking to, if someone cannot be focused at a time of love on the subject of love, then we know that they're part of the problem because that's what's gonna bring the world together is this feeling of love and understanding and value to each and, each and every person. And how that came about as a result of cannabis is because this plant is such a miracle. I mean, after all these years of uh, studying this plant, as a very, very, very serious fucking hobby, okay? I mean, I only swear when it's a beautiful fucking sunset. Well, this has been an incredibly serious fucking hobby, okay? <laughs> and I can tell you, I can tell you, despite all the other artistic things that I do, and I love uh, those in some ways, 
uh, more than the research that I've done because it's a sense of tremendous accomplishment like what I was talking about in terms of you feeling good about yourself when I can share something like a painting like this that I've done with all of you and we can all have a sense of appreciation for that's a piece of artwork. You know, I mean, we don't talk about an artist having a job, an artist's work, and that's why the word work has come back from being regarded as a dirty word, which it did a long time ago, and job has replaced it. So people talk about a job, you know, it's usually something that they're not happy with what they're doing, but an artist's work is always respected in a very special way. So as a result of being able to combine these things and have a, um, a web or a grid that connects all these things, it's been so easy for me to see that no matter how much photography, how much research, how much patience, how much love I've given to the people who've shared these intimate moments with me, a lot of which are very illegal and prohibited, that I've been able to still satisfy myself that I'm like Confucius says, or a lot of the other great philosophers, the more you know, the less you realize you know. Well, that may be so, but I happen to know that everything according to the wisdom of the great nothing is where it's all going. So as a result of having that more infinite view of what's not also known as cosmic consciousness, it makes it very easy for me to translate for those of you who are receptive to any of these matters which have got to do with how hashish has been being made from the past to now, and all the variations that are there are as different as each one of us being given dough, uh, or rather flour, water, eggs, yeast, and whatever other uh, ingredients we would like to make in a loaf of bread, and we're all in the same place, we all use the same oven, and every one of us, that loaf is gonna come out different because of something about the way we mixed it. So those are the things that give us all the sense of uniqueness and individuality that also help people who, in terms of their families, because one of the questions that Andrew asked me today from Cannabis, the magazine is Digest. Cannabis Digest, was do people really as a family uh, participate in things to do with this, uh, this celebration of using hemp, you know, for, uh, as a part of their intake, as often on a daily, you know, basis. And that's absolutely true because there are so many aspects to what uh, can be done with it in terms of when you're extracting or making or cooking, that even little children can be sitting there rolling little balls of majum and you know feeling that they're contributing, especially if they have some of that silver foil paper to put around it at the end, so it comes out looking like a little silver ball. There's so many ways, I mean, when I was in Morocco, I mean, the kids would be helping with gathering the seeds or whatever, so it certainly is a family affair. There's, there's something that every single person can find instead of, you know, having an attitude of they're, they're bored, and besides anyone who in this world says they're bored is usually a boring person. Hard to imagine being bored in the world as it is today. So as a result of the, um, the little bit that I've now shared with you, let's deal more specifically with the ways people were making hash back in uh, thousands of years ago. They actually were doing things in reality as a result of this past week when I was doing some extractions, we did four different methods of extraction with uh, the same amount, 300 grams, uh, a little over 300 grams actually. Was, uh, yeah, I think it was, it doesn't matter, approximately the same amount. And we did it four different ways to see what the results would be on how it came out in terms of quantity and what at a comparison and, uh, and also the amount of time that it took to do each of the extractions. So. I have no doubt in my mind with the person who was doing this with me, who was becoming now an alchemist because of being able to deal with these different ways of doing an extraction, and yet all of them basically coming out looking the same at the end, which is two pages in this new edition, which Ted was kind enough to mark. So here are two different ways of extraction. This is the water method over here. I'm not sure if you can see it. And this one here is the butane method. But in the end, the two products come out almost looking exactly the same. So that's very interesting that that's the, some of the flexibility that this plant has, that it can be used in so many diversified ways and always end up giving you those same results, just like it was such a pleasure for me the day I realized 